Hello everyone, this is Supreme Decisions, and today I want to go over a video that I posted with the body cam footage from a young man that sent me the video based on a stop that had taken place in Frisco, Texas by Officer Blake Simmons. Now, Blake Simmons, you know, it was a few, a few things that were done to kind of conceal his identity, which was, which I thought was actually kind of comical because, you know, I'll get into that later, but, you know, because he's a good guy and, you know, you want to put those good guys on display. And I actually did the video and posted it because I wanted to see what the comments would be like. Because a lot of people think just because an officer is nice that the officer is doing the right thing. The great part about this was the fact that we saw this nice officer lie blatantly lie to use a cold weather situation for the most part to not only manipulate his officers he also manipulated his supervisor he then entailed a lot of things that were beyond the scope of a normal or even legal traffic stop now i want to start off with arizona b grant it's 556 US 332, and this is a 2009 case. It was a United States Supreme Court decision holding that the Fourth Amendment of the United States requires law enforcement officers to de demonstrate an actual and continuing threat to their safety by an arrestee or a need to preserve evidence related to the crime of arrest. I'm say, related to the crime of arrest from tampering by the arrestee in order to justify a warrantless vehicle search to arrest conducted after the vehicle recent occupants had been arrested and secured. Now, why did I bring that up? Why is that important? Because we, law we saw in the video that the passenger or the uh, occupant he was stopped for registration. Well, possible registration. We saw that there was no continued or actual threat by this young man, which was technically the arrestee, but he wasn't being arrested. So there was no need to preserve any evidence because there was no crime as there was no arrest. Yet, when the occupant got out the car, he stated, I do not consent. So in order for an officer to actually be able to justify searching without a warrant, he needs consent or a crime. He had neither. I'm gonna say that Officer Blake Simmons did not have consent nor did Officer Blake Simmons have a crime. Because you remember, Arizona began 2009. Threat to their safety, a need to preserve evidence related to the crime of the arrest. There was no arrest. There was no need for preservation. Now I'm going to give you another one because the basic rule of the Fourth Amendment is that search conducted outside judicial process without prior approval by judges or magistrate are per se unreasonable. Because I watched a lot of the comments, I got a lot of emails, and I didn't, I'm not going to put anybody on blast, because that's what, what most of these trolls want. They want me to say their name. They want me to put what they put out. I, I will, it's there. And the emails, you know, it, they are where they are. But the basic rule of the Fourth Amendment is that the search is conducted outside the judicial process. Consent over the judge without prior approval by a judge. Why? Because officers don't know what probable cause is. Yes, I pause for dramatic effect because I want you to understand that. Officers don't know that. Officer Blake Simmons' search was outside the judicial process. Why? Because he didn't have consent. He didn't have a crime. He didn't have a judge's or magistrate's prior consent, which made it unreasonable. Officer Blake Simmons 
did not act within the scope of his office. He did not act in objective good faith. He did violate clearly established statutory or constitutional rights, which as a reasonable person would be aware of. He had no consent. There were no exigent circumstances. There was no fleeing. He wasn't engaged in a high-speed chase. You ready? The young man, after he got out of the car, was more than an arm's length away from the vehicle, so no evidence could be destroyed. The stop was for a possible registration violation, which did not offer grounds for a vehicle search for any evidence of a crime. I'm going to say that one more time. The stop was vehicle registration. Possible vehicle registration violation. Possible. Because remember, Blake Simmons said, oh yeah, your registration is good, just like you said. He said that at the 16 minute mark. There was no urgency to act without getting a warrant. Why? Because he had no probable cause of a crime. That's why I pointed this out, because I, I always tell people, this is why I have a channel. This is why I'm able to speak on this, because I don't have to give you my, as one, one young man put, my perspective on law. I'm actually giving you law. I'm giving you actualities, not ideas. I'm giving you what's written. I don't have to go into perception. I don't have to go into perspective. Why? Because it, I don't have to offer my opinion. I can just offer you law. Because that's what this is. I can give you everything you need. I, I'll prepare the dinner plate for you. I'll set it in front of you. It's up to you to eat. Because again, the search was not incident to arrest. Why? Because he was not arrested. He had no warrant for arrest or for the search. No one was in danger of imminent harm, thus no continuing or even actual threat. Blake Simmons did not witness a felony being committed or have an idea of one had been committed by the occupant. He did not act in a manner to preserve evidence because he was looking for evidence. Because the stop by Blake Simmons and his own words was for vehicle registration, not something dangerous or even a felony. Per Texas Code of Criminal Procedure, Article 14.50. Whoops. Yes, again, I pause for dramatic effect because I want you to understand the clarity that I'm offering you. Because, again, that's not my opinion. He violated Texas criminal procedure. He violated Texas law. He violated his own restriction. And this is why I tell people the existence of the Brady list is purposeful. Because everyone that has been stopped by Blake Simmons in Frisco, Texas, or in any other county he's ever worked in need to challenge each and every stop he's made. Why? Because this this happy, nice officer willfully violates law. Because remember, Johnson said he does this all the time. This ain't the first one. It won't be the last unless we start challenging it. He cannot say he acted through incompetence as police training for certification here in Texas was 11 months and two weeks long, thus meaning he willfully made a conscious decision to violate the right of that motorist. And the other officers chose to assist him in doing so knowingly and willfully. Why? Johnson's acknowledgement. He does this all the time. Thus, he has knowledge that this action is done willfully all the time. I'm going to go because I'm going to say something later because I'm going to give you something. Because there can be no crime without mens rea. 
the guilty mind. You remember that word, one word I always give you? Mens rea is another word for intent. That's not the meaning, but that's intent. That's what is needed for a crime. Mens rea. There is need for an intention because the mind also has to be guilty. Because the act itself doesn't make one guilty unless the mind is also guilty. They have officer discretion, which means they made a willful choice, thus meaning they do not have qualified immunity because they acted willfully. Because remember, there's only two ways you lose qualified immunity. Through ignorance, which we dispel because he went to school for almost a year before he was certified. We know he violated Texas law, so that was a willful act because he knows Texas law. He does this all the time, so that means he is willfully violating the rights of everyone he stops. Knowingly, through his discretion, he's making a choice. That's what discretion means. Texas Constitution, Article 1, Section 9. The people shall be secure in their persons. This motors wasn't. In the house papers and possessions. This motors was from all unreasonable seizures or searches and no warrant to search any place or seize any person or thing shall issue without describing them as near as may be or without probable cause support it. Uh-oh. If and or. And supported by oath or affirmation. That's Texas Constitution. Neither federal agents, Texas law enforcement, nor local police officers have the right to conduct a search and take evidence in violation of state or federal search and seizure privacy protections. Uh-oh, what did I just say he violated? This young man's privacy. Thus, conducting an unlawful search on this motorist without consent after the purpose of the stop was completed. Because you remember I told you, he said, your registration is good, which was the reason for the stop. Blake Simmons and his other fellow officers gained intimate information about the motorist and his belongings. That is a flagrant violation of his civil rights, adding that the search exceeded the implicit license afforded to Officer Blake Simmons and other officers in that exact situation. What is that license? The ability to see without touching. Someone passing by. That's the power Blake Simmons had. He had the power, since we like to use the word for police officers because they're servants and him. He had the power to get plain view. He didn't have that. He didn't have consent, and he didn't have probable cause of a crime, which is why he didn't choose to get a warrant. He chose to search in spite of not having consent, in spite of not having probable cause, in spite of there not being a crime. Officer Blake Simmons made a physical intrusion onto the motorist's conveyance and his personal property. Because not only did he go into a closed vehicle, he began to use a highly sensitive animal, device, machine, and then he opened glove compartments. He opened multiple doors. He opened trunk. He went inside the trunk, retrieved things. He went inside a bag and retrieved things in violation of that young man's privacy and against not only his constitutional rights, the rights of Texas. He went beyond the scope of his duties, even with the Texas Constitution. He went beyond the scope of duties, even with Texas criminal code. 
he went beyond the duties of even Frisco County's allowing. Why? Because he does it all the time. And always remember this, because I'm going to leave you with this, because I think this one actually helps you out a little bit. Whenever you're going after the government, police officers, whatever, the DA, after a bad search, legally, the burden of proof during the evidence suppression hearing is placed on the government. Why? Because they are the ones who act. They are the ones who made the will for choice. And they are the ones that have